there's yet more nerd stuff I need to discuss. Um, in this case, it's uh, it is of course, of course, the the wonderful greatest show ever, um, Doctor Who, which uh, I don't know. You may have possibly noticed I am a fan of. Um, It's uh, the day after Angels Take Manhattan has been broadcast, and my thoughts on Amy and Roy leaving. They got the ending they really deserved. In the best way possible, they got a truly epic... Actually, no, I wouldn't quite say epic. Simon Moffat seemed to deliberately move away from the usual epic companion leaving story that Rossi T. Davis seemed to favour towards like um like Doomsday and um and Lost of the Time Lords, Journey Send. There wasn't any saving the world in this one. It was really about Amy and Amy and Rory. And that's something that's something I really, really liked about the episode. But um but yeah, it was one of the most powerful emotional companion departures we've had had in a while. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the saddest, just because um, they, although they never saw the doc doctor again, and it you just feel so heartbroken that the doctor. Clearly, Amy and Roy, they're as uh, that's lit literally dead to him, as the brigadier is. And you just feel so so sad for the d doctor. That he, you just can't ever see them again. But, uh... Yeah, I mean... I, mean, I think the saddest ending for me, though, to a companion is, uh... It's, it's, it's Donna. Um... I mean, she had all that improvement. She... Her mind really opened up, and, um... She really... She really became a much better person. And then... Bam! All of that was taken away from her, and she actually begged not to have it all take, taken away from her. But of course, the doctor did. It gave her a chance at, at life. At life, life and that, but um, but it was just yeah, that was the most um, heartbroken I've ever gotten over, over a companion, over a companion's departure story. I think. I mean, Journey Send it had it, it, its flaws, especially with um, with kind of ruining the tragedy of Doomsday. But it always brings tears to my eyes um, with Donna's departure story. Whereas with Rory and Amy, they will miss the Doctor. They they missed the Doctor all their life for the rest of their lives. Yes. But they were happy together, and that was something that really really moved to me because over the past two and a half years it's it has been a lot about our Amy and Rory and their li lives together and both with and without the Doctor especially in the um, last few ep le last few episodes um, showing both their lives um of when they travel and when they don't travel with the Doctor. I thought, thought that was um, a good, it's an interesting angle. Although I am glad that it's only lasted these last five episodes. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you know that um, at the end of the day, they're going to they're gonna be happy. I think there's just, a, um, or were happy. It, <laughs> that's the thing about time travel, it really does mess with your head. But, uh, I mean, yeah, um, another thing I like about it, um, is that, um, it's fully resolves Amy and Rory's story, completely resolves it, so that, um, by the time Christmas comes along, we get, we've got ourselves a brand new companion, and with that comes a brand new way to look at the series series. It's, uh, it comes along with it, every new companion really. It's just um it's just a brand new way to look at the doctor at its life and I think um yeah, I think and uh, that's something I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to 
uh, to a lot. Um, oh, and um, more on, uh, on on Doc Two. I've been steadily going through the episodes in order from from the start um, for the past uh, for the past year or so. I've been steadily I've been trying to s speed up when I when I can. Um, uh, but yeah, over the past few days, I've really gone back into it. At the moment, I'm on season five of the classic series. Uh, just a few quick comments. Um, watch the Ice Warriors, which um, which I've actually really grown to like. I especially love the Ice Warriors. I'm a big fan fan of them. Um, I think. Uh, uh, I think. The biggest appeal is um it's how they it's how they speak um and and the lizards um they lizard, lizard like bodies he's i don't know there's just something really 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 great about them um but yeah i think there's a lot of power uh, power in how how they speak i mean you just uh listen to the audios the big finish short audio stories they are always fan fa fantastic um in fact uh, one of my favorite ice warrior stories of all time deimos slash the resurrection of mars anyone who considers that themselves a fan of um a fan of the ice warriors they really do need to look that up um actually the whole of um of season four the eighth, eighth doctor and lucy miller adventures it's it's my favourite currently it's my personal favourite Doctor Who season of all time in any format. Um I won't go into detail there, but yeah. Um that season is just sheer perfection for me. It's a huge brilliant analysis of of the of who the Doctor became by the end of the classic series, by the T V movie, all that stuff, of the hero he had become and then in the final story, just completely breaking that down and replacing that with a with a man ready for war. It's, it's not doesn't lead directly into the time war or anything, but it does does something even better than that. It um it has the character of the Doctor uh, ready for or ready for the time war at least, and indeed ready for the, the new series when and Rose starts. And considering we're not likely to get a Time War story anytime soon, that's that would be a near perfect um perfect ending for the Eighth Do Doctor series. But yes, um but yeah definitely if if you have have the money, I'd say definitely buy season four of the Eighth Doctor and Lucy Miller stories. So it's just absolutely I have no words to describe just how truly great it is. Um, but yes, moving back. Notice I got sidetracked again. Um, moving back to um, uh, to my current who who watch. Um, yeah, like the Ice Warriors. Um, then after uh, words, uh, after that story, um, it was the enemy of the world. Um, that was a fun story. That was kind of like a, a James Bondy clearly inspired by James Bond type of films and it also got Patrick Troughton to um to play two two roles both the doctor obviously and this um this kind of like devious um uh de you know devious villain with a mexican accent and salamander and yes uh, Patrick Troughton with a uh, Mexican accent. That's just sheer golden entertainment right there. Um, but oh, I just it just makes me so sad that all we've got at the moment is um it's just the soundtracks to so, to so many Troughton ep ep episodes that they're missing and all we have are the soundtracks because I think I would have enjoyed that story a lot more if I had actually seen. Patrick Troughton's performance, but to be honest, I think I can s s say that the same about a lot of Patrick Troughton's stories. 
the few stories you can watch, you can clearly see it's all in the the mannerisms and the visual. Oh, and um, hit all the little quirks in the performance. You can see where Matt Smith got all this inspiration from. So that's uh, that's one thing that does make me feel sad about where I'm in the current point in the Who Watch is that there's so few episodes that I'm actually watching. Um, all I'm doing is just list listening to the soundtracks. Um, and then uh, and it's uh, now I'm on currently Web of Fear five of Eps down one to go. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty cool story. Um, definitely worth a listen for the first ever appearance of the Brigadier, pre Brigadier. Uh, I might add in this story he's a colonel. Um, yeah, that's. You can see why um why they brought Nicholas Courtney back. He just he he pretty much you know he be, became the role and just brought this wonderful professional man man to the brigadier and just so clearly professional. There was also a bit of charm to it as well. So yeah, Nicholas Courtney very very a cool playing uh, Colonel Lethbridge Stewart. Uh, yeah, so it's wonderful to finally find I, to finally find that find out how he and the doctor first met. Very very cool that. But uh, but yeah, that's all I have to say on um on my current uh, on my current um, Doctor Who obsession stuff. Um, uh, yeah, don't really have that much, uh, much, much, much more to say. Thankfully, this went over way, a way longer than I had planned. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, the only thing that I do have t to mention is that um, uh, thick of it. Um, with Doctor Who now, now currently gone for a couple of months, the thick of it is without a doubt my favourite show on the on the air right now. It's one of the few shows that um, that uh, uh, that I watch, you know, every single a week. Uh, anyone who hasn't hasn't watched it, um, uh, anyone who loves who can put up with a huge amount of swearing and can appreciate when it's it's done. I'm right. My recommendation: check out the thick of it if you're not watching it already. Even if you don't know the first thing about politics, I gotta admit I don't know the first thing about politics nine times out of ten. But um, but yeah, uh, just check it out for. Oh, for the dialogue alone is just pure. Oh, oh, it's just a gold mine. Um. But yeah, beyond that, uh, um, that's. I'm pretty much I'm done. Um, I'll try and upload another vlog when possible, um, or when I can be bothered and not get too distracted. Uh, but yeah, um, seems to have gone be better than last time. A few steps here and there, but hopefully, hope hopefully, um, it's noticeably better. So yeah, shout to you guys soon. Later.